Number 226.
glad you saved me. Say amen. Amen. What a blessing to be in God's house tonight. Good to see everybody out. Praise the Lord for you being here. What a blessing. What a blessing. Heavenly love. He walks with me and he talks with me. Just so thankful for his presence in our lives. I do, I do declare we uh, were on our way back from revival last night and uh, stopped at a gas station to get some gas, and get something to drink. And there was these two, this uh, man and woman outside uh, the gas station, seemed to be in church clothes. Just whatever the man was talking about, and he was a bigger, darker fella, and she's a little, littler lady, and uh, he was using his hands. And I just kind of sat there and watched him, because they were right at the front of the door. And he had a big grin on his face, and I sat there and watched long enough. I need to go in there and take care of my business. And I walked by, and he, he was telling her, with his, he was using his hands a lot. He said, you just don't know how much joy you can have until you get the presence of God. Yeah. Shoot, I don't even know who y'all are. I kind of want to stick around chatting. <laughs> but I, I promise to, to friend, family, or stranger, there's joy in the presence of God. Yeah. There's joy in it. Amen. Uh, I say this, and this is the understatement of the year. I appreciate this morning service. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, heaven just helped, and uh, what a prayer answer to see Brother Bud back with us, and not just sitting in a pew, but in the pulpit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what a blessing! What a blessing! Wonderful preaching! Wonderful preaching! Uh, we, I got to to school. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And Apostle Paul climbs in the pulpit. I love every minute of it with all my heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Before we go to the Lord in prayer tonight, is there anyone have a prayer request, testimony, anything on your heart?
Brother Rob, lead us the Lord in prayer. Children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. 
excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less to dying lips a prince. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it, whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. He that covereth the transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separateth friends, separateth very friends. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her wealth meet a man, rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso rewardeth evil for good shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water, therefore leave off contention, before it be meddleth with. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to, no heart to it? A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Look with us in Romans tonight, Romans chapter number 16. Romans chapter number 16. How I appreciate your patience and reading with us. I appreciate you so much, church. Romans chapter number 16. We'll start at verse 16. Romans 16, verse 16 reads this way. Salute one another with a holy kiss. You could do that before COVID. <laughs> Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ with their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. I'm going to reread verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Last verse we'll read is in the book of Job. Last verse we'll read uh, is in the book of Job. I want to read verse number 8, chapter 1. Chapter 1 of Job, verse number 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered, and if you've got an ink pen or a highlighter, I'd love for you to highlight, draw a line, circle, put a star on the word my. Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. That's the reading of God's word. You can be seated if you will. We appreciate the word of the Lord tonight, and I, I mean this with all of my heart. I appreciate you standing. I know it meant the reading, and I appreciate you following along uh, in your precious Bible. Um, I've got a lot of thought on the heart, probably had it now for uh, the better part of the week. I, I would say probably at least since Tuesday. And uh, I, I appreciate uh, revival, and uh, God gave us this, and, and I was sure as soon as I got it. That's not for revival, that's for the harvest. So I'm tickled to death, tickled to death. Um, I, I want to look and read a lot of scriptures tonight, maybe set groundwork. In the book of Job, chapter 1, verse number 8, now, this sentence, this line has stuck out to me for days now. Hast thou considered my servant Job? My servant Job. And I, I want to read verse number 9 and 10 to you. Just to give you some more context. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doeth Job fear God for nothing, for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him? And I, I want to put this in, 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 in layman term if I can. When the devil's looking at God and saying, Have you not made a hedge about him? The devil knows better than to try God. Amen. Uh, I, I put that down just another level. The devil knows better than to mess with God. You look at the book of Philippians, and Philippians says this, that even the devils believe and tremble. Amen. Yeah. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house 
and about all that he hath on every side, that thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. I, I want to reread this to you. Have you not made a hedge about him, about his family, and about everything that he has on every side? If I could preach a title tonight by the help of the Lord, preach your thought, I want to preach this. God's guard dog. God's guard dog. Amen. Amen. Uh, I praise the Lord for it. Oh, I thought I know that it's what's on my heart. Uh, God's guard dog. I, I want to say this to you. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, in life the people that you have that stand up for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, we were in class this past weekend, and uh, for those that don't know, I work with behavioral children. And uh, had this message on the heart, was studying some things, and uh, we had a kid that just made an outburst in the class, and uh, one of the other students yelled at him and said, you just need to hush your mouth. And this kid doesn't have a very good home life at all. Uh, and the teacher stood up for him and said, you don't know what's going on in this kid's life. Best thing you can do is mind your own business. And that kid just melted and got up out of his desk and hugged that teacher. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm glad you got somebody that stands up for you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I, I want to say this, uh, my friend. Uh, when me and you got saved, we got somebody that stands up for us. Amen. 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 Pastor Bob preached just a couple of weeks ago. He's got you back. Uh, but I'll testify. He's got your front too. Yeah. He's got your sides. He's got you covered. Yeah. And uh, I, I can remember being the baby of, of the siblings in my house. And uh, I can remember my brother coming to my aid different times. He didn't do it for long. By sixth grade, I was six foot tall, 225 pounds. Uh, so I was going to my brother's aid pretty quick. Uh, but I, I, I mean this. If you've got someone that stands up for you, you ought to, you ought to cherish that. You ought to. Uh, I want to look tonight, we're going to look at a few things uh, about God's guard dog. And uh, just, to, just to set some groundwork, some things that are on the heart, we'll get to the message and we'll get out of the way. Uh, Job lost everything that he had. Uh, and it started with his business and it started with his work because uh, Job, uh, Satan felt that the, the quickest way to get to Job, get under his skin if you have it, uh, would be to attack his wallet. Amen. And there was a messenger that came every time that the devil attacked some aspect of Job's life. There was a messenger that came. And the messenger let Job know that all of his cattle and, and all of his herdmen were gone. Uh, can I say this? That messenger uh, stood up for Job. Amen. Uh, can I say this to you? I realize that uh, not many folk get to work in a Christian environment where everybody around you is a believer and everybody around you knows the grace of God. Uh, but can I say this to you, my beloved friend? If you've got somebody that watches out for you that you work with, if you've got somebody uh, that stands up for you in your job, you have a blessing. Yeah. Amen. If you've got somebody, and this is a small part of the message, if you've got somebody in your work line uh, that you can consider a friend, if you've got somebody, and remember, I'm not telling you if everybody you work with is this way, but if you've just got somebody uh, that you can consider a friend, you can consider somebody that's there for you and somebody that you're there for them, I want to tell you one more time, you have a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I want to look tonight at God's guard dog and uh, if you know, if you've got a dog, and some do, amen, there's some dogs back in the day, uh, when I was a little boy, folks wanted to have guard dogs. Guard dogs would stay outside your house and have uh, just mean little critters, and uh, strangers would come up to the house, and uh, man alive, you knew as soon as strangers got on the yard, those dogs would get to barking, and uh, I can remember as a little kid, uh, just about every house had this sign up in their yard, uh, beware of dog. Beware of the dog. Amen. And I can remember one of the first times I went door knocking as a pastor. Uh, I went up and uh, there was a trailer and uh, had a stake drove in the yard. Had a metal, hey, had a metal chain wrapped around it. Had this big black dog that was there. And that chain was right in front of the front door. And they were letting everybody know, don't you come near the door. Amen. Uh, and I can remember I was with two young men from our church and and they said, Chase, that dog looks awful mean. What do you want to do? 
Amen. And I was with a cop. We had a cop in our church. And he said, well, he said, if that dog attacks my pastor, there's going to be one dead dog around here. And I said, honey, I said, don't you worry about that gun. I said, the God I serve is greater than that dog. Amen. Amen. And we walked right up to that door. And one of the teenage boys that I was with out of our church, he quoted this scripture. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. And that dog got real close. And, and the closer we got to the door, how that chain just snapped. Amen. They, that dog couldn't go any farther. Amen. I believe that teenage boy might have got born again. Amen. I, I knocked on the door. Amen. That dog wasn't even barking or anything. Amen. And the, the dad of the family looked at me and he said, that's awful weird. He said, usually that dog does a lot of barking when strangers come up. And I said, we're all business for the king. Amen. And I talked so calm in front of him. We had a good visit. Uh, the man wound up coming to church and uh, the cop asked me when he left. He said, how did you stay so calm in front of that man and in front of that dog? I said, who are you kidding? I scared death of that dog. Amen. Uh, listen though. Uh, somewhere along the way, we didn't want amen, outdoors dogs. We didn't want guard dogs. Somewhere along the way, uh, we started wanting lap dogs. Uh, things are little cute fellas, and we can pet them, and we can rub the bellies. Amen. And we can just look at them and say, who's a good little boy? Who's a good little boy? Amen. Uh, but can I say this to you? I'm glad when I look at my God. I'm glad when I look at my Lord. I'm glad I don't have a lap dog. I'm glad I've got a guard dog. Amen. Uh, well, where is this guard dog? He's on the front porch of my soul. Amen. And I declare any time that Satan even tries to get close, uh, that guard dog just goes to barking. And I want to declare, my beloved friend, what happened here in Job's case. Amen. Job was a perfect and upright man. Uh, and the devil had been walking up and down the earth seeking whom he may devour. According to the book of 1 Peter, Amen. And the devil of God had a meeting. Amen. And said this. I asked him, said, where have you been? I told him he'd been walking up and down the earth. Amen. And God invited him. I said, have you tried my servant Job? How can I say this to you, my beloved friend? God had already asserted his ownership right out of the gate. I'm just letting you know you can try him, but he belongs to me. I'm just letting you know right now. You can fight him, but he is mine. So if the battle gets a little bit too hot, you will hear from me. If you overstep your bounds, you will hear from me. Can I say this to you? My beloved friend, the devil knew right off the bat. Can I say this? Guard dogs, they're awful touchy, just to be honest. Hey, man, if you get to the place that you touch the owner just wrong, that guard dog will just start growling. If you talk a little too loud, that guard dog, you can feel tension just rise. Hey, man, and if you say something you shouldn't or do something you shouldn't, if you move a little too quick, that guard dog just might get a hold of you. Amen. Can I say this to you? The guard dog that we've got in Jesus Christ, I mean, there's nothing that's going to get by him that he can't bring you through. Amen. Have listened to me, my beloved friend. Have this guard dog's been chewing. Have this guard dog's been barking. Have this guard dog's been killing for a long time. Hey, Ben, what do you mean, Chase? Have my friend, this guard dog, could have took care of Goliath one day. Amen. Have this guard dog, he's took care of lions and bears. Have this guard dog, he's taken care of whole armies before. Have this guard dog government for years. Uh, this guard dog has protected the church uh, for thousands of years. Uh, can I declare my beloved friend, uh, God looked at Jesus Christ and he said, this is your job. Uh, you escort safely every one of my children have uh, saved the heaven above. Amen. And there's been nothing that's been able uh, to get to us uh, because of who? Uh, because of the guard dog and what's his name? Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord for it. I want to look tonight at just a few things. My friend here, amen, was this guard dog Jesus Christ for Job's sake. 
Uh, can I declare, my beloved friend, you read uh, the book of Psalms, chapter number 40. Uh, you stay with me. We'll get to the meat of the message tonight. I feel like the Lord wants us to preach. Uh, can I say this? Uh, my beloved friend, uh, there Job was. Uh, God and the devil had a meeting. Amen. And it looked like so much uh, as Job was going through his trial uh, that God had given up on him. Uh, that God had let down his hedge. Uh, but can I remind you of what God told the devil? Uh, you can have his flesh, uh, but his soul belongs to me. Uh, can I remind you, my beloved friend, uh, don't you look at the Christian life uh, and get upset because you're suffering. Uh, don't look at the Christian life uh, and get upset because you're suffering sickness. Uh, don't look at the Christian life uh, and expect it just to be rose petals. Uh, uh, don't look at the Christian life uh, and think there won't be discouragements uh, and there won't be trials. Uh, can I promise you, my beloved friend, uh, uh, Jesus' promise uh, uh, was not to allow these things. Uh, uh, Jesus' promise was this, uh, uh, that he'd go with us always, uh, uh, even to the end of the world. Uh, uh, I can read uh, amazing grace. Uh, amen. I love one of those verses that uh, uh, it says this, uh, uh, through many dangers, uh, uh, pulls and snares, uh, I've already come uh, uh, to his grace that's brought me safe thus far, uh, and grace will lead me uh, safely home. Uh, can I declare, my beloved friend, uh, of the book of Psalms, chapter number 40, uh, it reads this way, innumerable evils have compassed me about. How do you look at the things that have attacked you? How do you look at the things, how bad events that things have happened, how sicknesses that have happened, how tragedies that have happened? How can I encourage you, my beloved friend? How the reason things was not worse is because of an awesome God. How the reason things weren't worse than what they were is because of an awesome God. How don't you doubt that His hand of protection was there? I don't you doubt if his hand of guidance was there. And I want to declare, he wasn't just guiding you, but he was guiding danger around you. He was guiding all the things that could come against you. I'm going to chase it. I'm not going to put the more on us than what we can bear. I want to declare, he's not measuring your strength. He's measuring his strength in you. I want to declare, that my beloved friend, when we are weak, he's still strong. When we're down, he's still up. When we're lonely, he's still with us. When we're hurting, he's still a great physician. I want to declare one more time, he has never left you. Amen. Now listen, my beloved friend, now let's go on in the message if we can tonight. Now my beloved friend, now Job was blessed with a great family. And can I just declare this for a moment? I uh, will try our best to get to the message tonight. Amen. Uh, whose job is it to chasten you? Uh, it's not the Baptist church's job. Honey, it ain't nobody else's job. It's God's job to chasten us. Uh, can I declare, my beloved friend, whose job is it to judge us? Honey, it's not the church's job. Honey, it's nobody else's job. It's God's job. Whose job is it to parent us? It's nobody else's job but God's job. How can I declare, whether you believe it or not, how God is very protective over what belongs to Him. He's not going to let anybody get to us that He doesn't want to get to us. He's not going to let somebody do His job. God, let it be known to the devil. You can do what you want, but you're not touching them. They belong to me. Amen. Oh, listen, my beloved friend, uh, the first guard dog I'd like to show you tonight if we could. Amen. Job had a family. Amen. Bless their hearts for that. Uh, can I say this to you, my beloved friend? Uh, there's some guard dogs in the house, and I want to remind you, uh, God's gave us some guard dogs. Uh, can I tell you this right out of the gate? Uh, the first guard dogs that we see are in the book of Genesis. Uh, there's Adam and there's Eve. Uh, God gave Adam a spouse in the way of Eve. Amen. And God gave Eve a spouse in the way of Adam. Uh, can I remind you of what God hath joined together? Let no man put asunder. 
But can I tell you, what God gave Eve was a guard dog in the way of Adam. And what God gave Adam in the way of Eve was a guard dog. What do you mean, Jay? Can I say this to you, my beloved friend? I, I, I declare, if there's something that a husband ought to do, he ought to take up for his wife. Can you say amen? If there's something that a wife ought to do, amen, she ought to take up for her husband when he's in the right. But listen to me, my beloved friend. And I love you with all my heart and with all my soul. But if there's something that we all stand between, between our spouse, it is the devil. Can I preach to you, my beloved friend? It is my honor as faith's beloved husband is to stand between her and the devil. I'll declare she's my blessing. And I want the devil to know she's my blessing. I declare she's my helpmate. And I want the devil to know that she's my helpmate. I declare outside of the grace of God that she's the most beautiful thing that I've ever laid eyes on. And I want the devil to be sure to know that. Well, Chase, what are you saying? Can I declare, my beloved friend, there's times of doubt that can rise up in our spouse's minds and then on how much we care for them, how much we love them, how special they are to us, how devoted we are to them. And can I preach what will happen? The carnal mind is enmity against God. And then when doubts start coming and thoughts start arising, can I preach to you whose job it is to take those doubts out of my wife's mind? It's nobody else's job to go to my wife and say, boy, Chase really does love you. I know he gets a temper on him from time to time, but boy, Chase sure does think the world of you. Can I cannot declare I'm one of the greatest embarrassments and we're getting to the message that one of the greatest embarrassments is for a spouse to be told how much they are loved by their spouse by everyone else except for their spouse. One of the greatest embarrassments is for a spouse to be told how much they're appreciated by their spouse by everyone else except for their spouse. Can I say this to you today? My beloved friend, amen. I believe we're preaching all right tonight. Now listen to me. If you've got a good spouse, amen, you need to let them know that you love them. And you need to let them know that you care for them. And can I declare it's not my job to tell your spouse how much you love them. It's not my job to tell your spouse how much you care for them. It's your job to do that. Can you say amen? Have listened to me tonight. And from there, I'll declare my beloved friend. If you want to see faith, can I just preach about me and you tonight? Just for a couple of minutes. Amen. And some of y'all don't think faith's got a mean bone in your body. Amen. But I'm going to let you know something. That faith that I have been in some situations. Have not in this church. Don't you worry about it. Have we been in this some situation? I've heard some church folks said some things, amen, about the beloved pastor uh, that they might not have, uh, amen, and I've seen faith tip that eyebrow up, uh, amen, and when the eyebrow goes up, uh, somebody's a fixing to get in some trouble, amen, and can I declare, uh, my beloved friend, uh, you might think that Chase Lee ain't got a mean bone in his body, I got a couple, amen, uh, if you want to see the bad side of Chase Lee come out, uh, you just start saying things about my wife. Honey, you just start judging a little bit about my wife. Hey, man, and I'll be the first one. Uh, can I preach to you? Uh, I love Miss Karen. Hey, man, her husband, Randy. Uh, but can I declare? Hey, man, according to Scripture, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter number 17. Hey, man, when she became mine. Hey, man, it's my job to stand for her. Amen and amen. Uh, listen to me, my beloved friend. It's my honor to fight for my wife. And can I declare, my beloved friend, uh, Pastor Bob said this the other night in revival. Anything that God's gave you, it's worth fighting for. Uh, Priest, listen. I want to declare to everyone in this room, 
Uh, can I preach to you tonight? Uh, my beloved friend, if you go to work, hey man, and you tell your work colleagues, hey man, all the negative things about your spouse, how uh, can I preach to you? You're not right with God. Uh, listen to me, my beloved friend. Uh, God sent you as a guard dog uh, to protect your spouse and to remind your spouse, hey man, about how blessed you are uh, to have that spouse that uh, didn't give you as a guard dog on your spouse. Have to bite your spouse. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're in it now. Amen. Oh, listen to me. We got Christians, so called Christians, that'll get out amongst the neighborhood, get out amongst workplaces, run their spouses down like crazy. Amen. And get up to church, try to preach. Get up to church, try to work for God. Don't you worry about it. I ain't making eye contact with nobody. I've got me a good eye on carpet tonight. Don't you worry about it. As long as the Word and the Holy Spirit say amen, I believe we'll just preach tonight. Amen. Listen to me, my beloved friend. I'm happy as happy can be to put on Facebook about how happy I am with that one. And don't you worry. She's a praying. She's fine. Now listen to me. I'm happy to stand in front of my whole family and let them know how happy I am with my spouse. Amen. Now can I declare my beloved friend Y'all don't think about this too many now, but I'm face biggest cheerleader. I don't put the suit on or nothing like that, but I'm face biggest cheerleader. Hey man, when face starts getting discouraged, Brother Randy, I'm going to cheerlead as hard as I can. When she starts getting down and out, I'm going to cheerlead just as hard as I can. When she starts struggling, hey man, and she starts talking about, hey man, how she doesn't feel like she deserves this or deserves that, can I preach to see my beloved friend? Uh, there might be some folks that don't deserve this or that. Uh, but my wife, bless the Lord, I'm going to tell her she does. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, listen to me, my beloved friend. Uh, I'm telling you, uh, when you look at other people's spouses, and we're going to dig a little deeper, we ain't done. I just pray that the Lord would help us tonight. Uh, when you look at other people's spouses, and you say, I wish mine was like that. Honey, uh, you're biting uh, the people that you was chosen to protect. Uh, listen to me. But when you eyeball in other people's spouses, other people's homes, other people's family, you're fighting the very home that God chose you to protect. And listen to me, my beloved friend. We need to move on to the neighbor. Help us, God, I pray. But listen, after God has set the mark on Job, and the devil came against his home, but he also came against his children. And listen, a messenger came to Job. Listen to 
you've got good parents, and I'm talking to kids, and I'm talking to adults, if you've got good parents, have you seen your parents with their suit tie on? Have you seen your parents with their church clothes on? Have you seen them with their PJs on? But you don't know what you can't see? If you've got good parents, you can't see how many back wounds they've got. You can't see how many scars they've got. You can't see how many wounds they've got. And chase what from? Because they protected you from so many things. And you can't even see it. But they walk back up to you. And they limp right back up to you. Just so they can tell you how much they love you. And boy, I light up with this Rhonda Fawcett. And I can remember my mother in the year 2000. And my daddy had a temper. He's a changed man now. And my daddy had a temper. And things got up at the house one night, Josh. And Miss Nana, a little chase. And my mother picked me up and put me in her lap. And she rocked me back and forth, Larry. And she prayed this prayer. I can still feel her tear coming down my cheek. And God, no matter what happens to me, don't ever let Chase forget that I love him. How can I declare my beloved friend? If you got good parents, listen to me. You can see their dry eyes now, but you can't see how many tears they've shed for you. Honey, listen, I can poke fun, amen, in a good way about how many hairs your mom and your dad don't have anymore. But can I declare where some of those went to? They went on the altar when they were praying for you. Listen to me, my beloved friend, I want to declare Joe, I can almost hear him scream as soon as he gets the news. I wish I could look at Joe's kids and say, man alive, can you not see how much your guard dog has been trying to protect you, has been trying to love you, has been trying to stand in front of bullets for you, but you keep chasing guns. Yeah. Is everybody all right? Yeah. I say this tonight, as far as young ones are concerned, I've got one more deacons and I'll be done tonight. Amen. Surely I need some prayers. Preaching on the deeper side tonight. I don't know. Oh, listen to me. Can I declare? If there if there's some people in your kid's life, can I just preach to you? Can I preach as a pastor tonight? That'd be fine with you. Amen. Amen. I love you with all my soul. Can I preach this to you tonight? If there's two people, two, can I just echo that one? Two people that your kids need to know are in their corner. Boy, listen, I praise God. And, and Chase bless all the flesh our kids, all our kids in the church. Amen. I hope they know that old Chase Lay loves them. I pray they do. Hope they know. Amen. That old Chase Lay's in the corner of their favorite brown guys in the corner. Amen. And listen to me though. But can I say this? One of the saddest things in you in the education system. No, it's the same as I do. One of the saddest things to look at, amen, is look at a kid's support system. And mommy and daddy are nowhere to be found. Amen, to look at, at who's in the kid's corner. Who's rooting for the kid? And it ain't dad, and it ain't mom, it's somebody else. It's, it's grandparents. I'm not a bashing grandparent. But can I preach to you? If you got good grandparents, y'all thank God for it. But can I say this to you? I'm not a loving friend. Uh, there's times that your kiddos are going to be raw and it'll be blunt wrong. Uh, but can I preach to you? Uh, if they're wrong, ought not stop your love for them. Uh, I want to preach that one more time. Uh, there'll be times they'll do things that'll break your heart. Uh, there'll be times like Job's case uh, uh, that you can't stand and agree with them. Uh, but your love had better still stand for them. Amen. Uh, listen to me. Uh, my beloved friend. I want to declare up to you tonight. Hey, Amen. When you look, hey, Amen. And you see parents, and I just preach this to you. Hey, Amen. When you see parents, they don't care how the kids' school is doing. They don't care what the kids' interests are doing in sports. They don't care what addictions the kids may be falling into. They're not concerned with what the kids looking up on the internet. They're not concerned with where the kids going after school. They ain't concerned about that man. How can I preach to you? How my beloved friend, how mommies and daddies, grandmas, grandpas, can you hear you pastor tonight? How you may not get no big trophy in heaven for being a good parent, being a good grandparent. You might not get no big ceremony in the house of 
Hey, none of you all know what we started hearing. Pastor Bob was there. Uh, Miss Courtney was sitting there. Hey, and some others were there. Hey, then I started hearing these testimonies. Uh, revival has been such a great help. I really enjoyed this revival. And you all know what that was setting the stage for? It ain't going to be long. The uh, revival's getting ready to close. Uh, they're celebrating the revival they've had. Uh, what a blessing. And you all know what that meant for Chase Lane? Uh, boy, we're about two days. Uh, we're about a day. Hey, man, and I'm so hard to buy Hey, man, I'm going to get the... I don't even need to put on my GPS anymore. Hey, man, I'm, the last night hit, and this night, I, I was studying scripture left and right. And I thought, boy, I'd enjoy getting climbed in this pulpit. I'm a man alive. Here in just a few hours, Brother Larry, I'm going to get climbed in Soul Harbor's pulpit. I've enjoyed getting to shake hands with everybody here. I've enjoyed getting hugged next. But I miss my church. Amen. Can I say this to you? My beloved friend. Amen. I'm happy to be one of the guard dogs at Soul Harbor Baptist Church. Amen. And can I declare? If you're a part of this church, and I'm not just talking about by letter, but by love. Uh, we've got folks that are here uh, that are not members here, but their love is here. And their heart is here. And you don't know what God made you. I uh, made you a guard dog for this church. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, can I declare my beloved friend? Amen. If folks look at me, amen, and say, but uh, what church do you love most? Amen. It's my privilege. I have to say, I love me some Souls Harbor Baptist Church. Amen. Is anybody with me tonight? Can I declare my beloved friend? I will chase and folks look at me and say, what's the best church I know? I have to look at them and say this. Well, our church is a fairly good one, but I know of a better one. Can I preach to you, my beloved friend? If you're not awful careful, the people God chose you to be a part of, you going to buy them. Can you say amen? And listen to me, my beloved friend tonight. I'm happy to fight for this church any day of the week. Well, Chase, hey, man, I can't tell you how many times that I've heard this remark over the past year or so. Chase, y'all got drums and you sing contemporary music. And you don't know what I say, but we love Jesus. Amen. We're not contemporary to be contemporary. Uh, just like I'm hoping you ain't singing hymns, uh, just so you can say you're singing hymns. Uh, we're singing contemporary because we love Jesus. Uh, we're mixing it up with hymns because we love Jesus. Amen. And you'll know what happened just a few months down the road. I get call from the same people and say, we've been watching your services. Amen. And there's Jesus in that singing. Amen. And my friend, I get a call. Amen. About preacher Josh Golden. Amen. He's listening to a message. Be as interesting as you are interested. Amen. We like that guy. Amen. And you'll know what God did. He handed the microphone to me and say, Now's the time for you to brag on your blessings. Amen. I get a call. We got to listen to brother Tommy Lunster preaching on home improvements. Amen. And then it's my time to brag on the blessings. I get a phone call. We got to listen to brother Bob Bowe. Whoever that preacher was about being alive. Uh, we enjoyed that so much. Hey, man, back when we were going live and Tony Large was running laps at the atmosphere. Hey, Amen. Uh, running laps from the booth back here, booth back to here. And you'll know I get calls that would say, whoever's doing that live, you tell them that uh, we appreciate it. It was my turn then uh, to brag on the blessings. Uh, I get texts and I get calls. Amen about the music and the musical talent and that we have. It's my turn but to brag on our blessings. Amen. Folks come to the church and they visit. Amen. It's my turn to brag on the blessings. But can I say this to you? But my beloved friend, I'm happy to fight for so far. But can I ask you, are you happy to fight for so far? Amen. Now listen to me, my beloved friend. I'll fight for so far. I'll fight with so far. I don't know that, and I'm not trying to rally the trip. I'm preaching to you about guard dogs tonight. It's my honor and it's my privilege uh, to link arms with our four deacons, uh, to link arms with our preachers, uh, to link arms with our church. And I'm happy to be a part of this church. Amen. Uh, can I say this? 
That's one example. And I can give you loads. I got a card this week from Ms. Rhonda Fawcett. And it said this. It, hard to believe that years went by since you became our pastor. Had very good sentimental thanks in it. it meant the world. Our church has sent cards to my family that y'all don't even know. And it meant the world to them. What are you getting at, Chase? I'm happy to put my flag in this church. Here's the facts, folks. There will always be things about places that you may disagree with. That's just facts. But when you look at God's place you there, and you look at the love they've showed you, that's God and matter more. Is that right? Amen. Amen. I, I pray this with all my heart. And you can you can ask these preachers. I talk to them, especially preacher Josh. Can I just share my heart? Again, this is Pastor Chase preaching. Brother Rob, Brother Whalen, Brother Scott, Brother Andy. I don't want them to be a deacon here because they have to be. I want them to be a deacon here because they want to be. Yeah. Amen. Can you hear me? Yeah. I believe we're still plugged in. This part there. Our preachers here. I, I appreciate the burden to preach. And I know that Brother Bud, Brother, uh, Brother Bob, Brother Josh, Brother Tommy, I know there's times you've got to preach. But I don't want you preaching without you wanting to. Yeah. Is that right? Sunday school teachers love you to death. Hallelujah for it. But Lord of mercy, I pray that you can see whether, whether it's two people in your class or five or 15, I pray that God shows you the blessings that you are. And I don't pray, I don't just pray that you're, you're desirous to teach here. I pray you're happy to teach here. Same with our musicians, same with our song. I pray that you're not doing what you're doing here because you, get, you, have, you have to and it's duty. But I pray you're happy to be here. Am I on the right page? Can I, can I share this right there? We'll close tonight. A few weeks ago, the coffee family was here. Uncle Ben and Holly, uh, Ed, Alicia, and the girls, April and Pete. Courtney and Caitlin had about Six, six, seven new kids, all from that family. You two will never, ever know the blessing that y'all were to those girls. Amen. 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 They were old fashioned this week, and Greg is still talking about how much he enjoyed being in y'all's class. My dad was here a year ago, set two rows behind Brother Richard, and he enjoyed the Sunday school, and he still talks about it. Amen. Here's my prayer. And I know I've pastor preached tonight, and I appreciate you for letting me do it. My prayer is this. I pray that the people that visit here are just as happy visiting here as you are to be a member here. Yeah. Happiness shows, folks. It really does. Yeah. Pastor Mark Langley, none of you know him. None of you know him. He was out of pastoring for a while, and he's back to pastoring now. And he said, Chase, he said, I watched one of your videos, and it reminded me why I love pastoring. I said, all right, what is it, preacher? He said, Chase, I can see you're happy to be there. And they're happy to have you. Folks, listen, I can look at y'all and I can tell you that. But boy, it is my honor. It's your deacon's honor. It's your Sunday school teachers. It's every member of this church's honor to make sure that happiness stays. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. God bless you. I've done my part tonight. Brother Rob, if you would, long rest serve in the sweet regrows. If you would tonight, come sing. Musicians, if you would, come play.
I say this before Brother Rob sings tonight, before we're going to let Miss Courtney sings, musicians play. Hey, did you know that it ain't every Sunday we can fly away? Now, I, I want to I correct that by saying this. I've heard some folks say, well, you can't sow seed in a windstorm. I understand that. But can I say this to you? Just because we can't have 15 folks running laps every Sunday doesn't mean we can't come in here thankful. Amen. Amen. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So in, in, in my soul, Sydney, if we're breathing, then we should be thankful. Amen. Did you know they sometimes, and I feel like tonight's been one of them, they sometimes preach it gets just a little bit stern on the stern side. And maybe it ain't heaven. Maybe it ain't the resurrection. Did you know that sometimes tragedy strikes churches? Mm -hmm. Discouraging times come. Marriages split. Kids leave. The life happens. Hey, listen. If life can happen in your life, then life can happen in the church. Yeah. And we silly for thinking it can't. But can I say this to you? If God is still God in the good and the bad, then He's still God in this house. Can I just speak to our church tonight? And again, I thank you for letting me pastor tonight. I thank you for it. <clears throat> as sure as I know that God's in my ministry when I'm flying away preaching, when Chase is getting his three-foot jump from the bullpen, as sure as I know it, I know God's still in my ministry in discouraging times. As much as I know that God's in this church when we're packed wall to wall and there's no mass and we're all just happy to be here, I know God's still in this church when there's a few of us. The devil will get in your mind in discouraging times, stressful times, and if he can't attack you through your, through your job, and if he can't attack you through your family, then he'll attack you through your faith. Yeah. And he'll start picking apart your church. And he'll start picking apart your pastor, and picking apart your preacher, and picking apart your teachers, and picking apart your song leaders and your songs. Don't forget, honey, when it's you versus the devil, you ain't the guard dog. Yeah. Jesus is the guard dog. Okay. Best thing you can do is run back in the house and scream real loud. And you don't know what'll happen when you yell real loud. That guard dog. <laughs> that guard dog comes sprinting through. And whatever doubt, what discouragement you got, whatever devil, that guard dog. Hey, can I ask you tonight? I know I preached hard tonight. Just real quick, how many of y'all are blessed in your daily life? God bless you. God bless you. How many of y'all have the absolute best family? God bless you. And I, I, I'm including your faith. I'm including your Savior. I'm including your blessings. And I'm including your church. How many of y'all got the best faith? And can I say just a word to that? We are, we are silly, especially in today's time. Not everybody's got a good family. Is that right? But here's what I want you to look with me. If you don't have good brothers and sisters, God's gave you good brothers and sisters. If you don't have good parents, God's gave you good parents. If you don't have good moms and relationships with moms and dads, God's gave you mother and father figures. And if you're struggling, God's gave you people in the church and in His Word and in songs to lift you up. Whether you can see it or whether you can't, God's been good to you on every side. Amen. Every side. Let's stand. Let's sing. God bless you.
And the same way with our deacons. And I'm just giving you just a small part of this. I'm not re preaching. But if our deacons are battling things, and God says, hey, why don't you call them? Lord, Randy, it's my honor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I've, I've been on the phone with Randy before and, and, and make the fellow laugh, talk to him about this and that. And right at the end of the phone call, I'll never forget this. He said this to me. He said, I said, Brother Randy, I said, if you ever need somebody to talk to, he's talking about having work, stress at work, things like that. I said, if you ever need somebody to talk to, just give me a call. And he said, Chase, he said, I know you're there for people, but he said, I want you to know I'm here for you. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> and that's not just a Randy thing. That's all these deacons things. But can I say this to you? It's the same with our youth. If God comes by your heart and says, hey, Carly Bessler's going through some things, why don't you send her to us? Why don't you call her? Why don't you pray for her? Somebody like God or not, but that's fine. But God just, hey, Carly's going through Why don't you pray for her? That's our honor. That's our job. And it's the same for, hey, listen, I told this a couple nights ago, old-fashioned. When I was a little kid, man, if, if a kid was squealing or crying or whatever the case was and mom was on all or something like that, somebody just walk up and pick up the kid. Yeah. Hey, listen, when I was a kid, I, I felt like I'd been adopted 14, 15 times. <laughs> Chase didn't cry hard enough. Somebody just, come here, Chase. Yeah. I don't know better. I'd just go. <laughs> yeah. And then they'd pick me up and all of a sudden I belong to that family now. Hey, listen, there's some folks in this room, and I'm not just talking about kids, I'm talking about young adults, things of that nature. You might need to take some ownership of it. Amen. Amen. And some of you have. Well, I appreciate that. But can I declare it to you? And I pray that you have, not just our Sunday night crowd, but our Sunday morning crowd. This is your church. Be happy about that. God, just be happy. Take ownership. Take ownership. Amen. Amen. I praise God for, for, for my life. And uh, I, I probably in the same way about you. There's times I come home, Miss Nancy, and I look at Faith, and uh, she'll want to fix some Weight Watchers. I'll say, let's go to Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> me get me eat something that's probably going to kill me because I need it. <laughs> and I'll vent about my job or something like that. She had a bad day a few weeks ago at work. It was on a Friday. And, and we, Weight Watchers is good business. I'm telling you it is. It, it ain't heaven, but it, it's at least spiritual. Amen. <laughs> and uh, she had a rough day at work. We went to the Oasis. And she got her hamburger. And I just looked at her and I said, have a bad day, ain't it? <laughs> and she said, you have no clue. <laughs> but through bad days at work, I'm still blessed with the job of God. Yeah. She's still blessed. Family struggles happen. But I'm still blessed with the family I've got. Yeah. And not just my family, but my friends. And there's folks in this room, and I'm not rambling, you got my word. There's folks in this room, I consider you brothers and sisters. I've said this for two, three years now. That man right there is the only father of the ministry I've ever, I've ever had. And I'm happy with that. And he'll never know how much I'm happy. And there's times I wonder if some folks think, well, Chase, he's probably got, he's got six or seven pastors, he's probably got four or five fathers. No, I mean that about you. I mean that. Listen to me. Whether it's your family, whether it's your church, whatever it is, it'll never mean as much as it should until you put yourself in it. Right. That won't. Amen. Praise God. And I'm happy to be at Soul's Heart, right? Amen. Amen. Glory to God for that. Somebody got something on your heart tonight? God bless you. Somebody else? <laughs> God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Somebody else? Something on your heart? God's been good to us, amen? Amen. amen. Don't forget, if you don't...
don't care. Be much in prayer for us if you will. Supposed to start revival uh, tomorrow night in Ohio. <coughs> Ohio. Uh, be much in prayer for us concerning that meeting. Looking forward to being with Preacher Callahan. And uh, after tonight, we'll we'll start the countdown. Be back so hard or something. Looking forward to it. Miss Christy, we're so happy to see you back. Just happy, just happy. Uh, any other announcements uh, that I'm missing or overlooking? Please do not forget, we've got revival starting here at the church at 12. Uh, it's getting close enough. I believe I can announce that every service now. Amen. It's getting close enough. And if you haven't started inviting folks, you need to. You need to. It's getting close. People will mark the calendars, things of that nature. It's getting close. And I encourage you, I encourage you. Uh, when you go to bed tonight, pray for revival. Not just pray for the meeting, but pray for you to be revived. Revive at home. Revival is necessary for the home, for the church, for the individual. Pray for the revival. Pray for our preachers. Pray for their wives and their families. Please, please do that. April 12th, we'll start at 7 p.m. nightly. Amen. If you're looking forward to revival, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for it. That, 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 that. It'll get better. Amen. amen. It'll get better. Amen. Praise the Lord for it. So thank you for God's house. Pray for Preacher Bud. Uh, I talked to Brother Larry, and he, he felt like he preached today. And Larry asked him, he said, how do you feel? He said, I feel like I've been ran over by a back truck. <laughs> Pray for Preacher Bud, if you will. Stand with us tonight. We're so happy to be out in the house of God. God's been good to us. Preacher Golden, if you would, my friend, this is prayer. Be God, I'm thankful for the Lord for our home and our church. Thank the Lord for our family. Lord, I pray each and every one here this evening. Father, we see and appreciate the love they have in their own home. Lord, in their own heart, Lord, the Lord, for those close to them. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we can share that love. Not just amongst each other, Lord, but with the world, with the lost, with the unknown. Lord, with those that need help. Father, let us be alive, Lord, in our homes, our workplaces. Let this church be alive. Father, we're on such a good good track, Lord, and we just pray, and I pray, God, that, that we continue to grow and we continue to be better for our homes and our community. Lord, for those that don't even know who we are, God, I, I pray, Lord, that one day we're going to hear of Sweet Harbor. And we'll remember, Lord, Sweet Harbor's name and how good that, that this church has been. And then, Father, that's my prayer. Father, we're thankful, Lord, for the guard dog, Lord, that you've been. We're thankful, Lord, yes. for the doubts come. Lord, you give assurance, Lord. Yes, it is. Scary times of trial, you give peace. Father, that you bring the, the demons right out of this church, right out of our lives, Lord, when we need it most, you know, there. Father, we're thankful for that. Lord, I thank you personally, Lord, for the help that I've got in my heart tonight. Lord, each and every day that I, I come into your courts, Lord, I want to be found. Give me the praise. Yes. I want to be ready. Yes, God. Father, we thank you, Lord. I pray the same for every heart that's here uh, this evening, Lord. Father, just be with us for the remainder of the